right here on Newsmax, John Tobacco, also with us, global political, global business consultant Hillary Fordwich. Before we get to the Bidenomics, the topic at hand, I'll get both of your takes on the fact that the shutdown has been averted, at least for 45 days. John, do you see this as a victory for the GOP? I know you have some, there's some hardliners there. They're not happy about it. They want Speaker McCarthy out. What do you think? Well, look, I think one thing we can always be guaranteed is the Democrats and Republicans will find a way to unite to spend more money. So I think it's much to do about nothing. But at the same time, Lydia, if you remember the last time, I think it was 2018, when there was a shutdown, the garbage still got picked up. The schools were still open and life went on in America. And maybe a little bit of tough love. All those people are going to get their paychecks two or three weeks later. And I feel bad for them. But at the same time, the Republicans have to show some strength. And a little shutdown, I don't think ever hurt anyone. Hillary, what do you think, though, that this they, the Democrats would have used the shutdown as a tool to really smear the Republicans and make them look like the bad guy, when in essence it's President Joe Biden and the Democrats who, who are the bad guys here, and, and the president didn't want to do anything? Yes, you're absolutely right about that, Lydia. Pleasure to be back with you and John. And a number of issues here. You're right. They were absolutely portraying it as extreme MAGA right Republicans. What is extreme about the fact that if you ask really any a responsible American, if they realize that 100 percent of everything we pay for has to be funded and it only comes from them, there isn't any government money. Everything has to be funded by us. I think what's interesting, though, about this con continuing resolution is happy Thanksgiving, because it only really takes us about 45 days, which will be about Thanksgiving, and there wasn't any funding for Ukraine. And I think it is interesting to say, look, we need to secure our border before we start taking care of other borders, although, of course, the Democrats are saying that Putin is loving this. I think that this is really just a stopgap. I don't think that it really solves anything because we simply have to stop spending at the rate that we are. We can't afford it at a nation because we have to fund it. Well, it's the Democrats, of course, that want the endless spending. Let's talk back about Bidenomics. I'll start off with you, John. Why, why is Bidenomics such a disaster? Explain it to you, because you're, you're really good at taking a really complex issue, breaking it down so that the everyday person can understand why it is it it's such a disaster in a nutshell? Well, I think Hillary hit the nail right on the head when she said all this 100 percent of this money we don't have. So Joe Biden's been running the magic printing press in the sky for the last three years. And that's why we have this runaway infl in inflation. But at the same time, Lydia, you know, all these stats and you said that the left can't even fake it anymore. All these stats that the Bureau of Labor and Statistics tells us, you know, core inflation. Oddly enough, it leaves out food and utilities. And, you know, on Wise Guys, we get out and talk to people on the streets and everyone's saying the food prices are out of control. The utility bills are up 40 percent. So there's some tricknomics in Bidenomics because they're leaving out the key things. And the bottom line is this, Lydia. I checked in uh, with some of my favorite foods. And, you know, back when Donald Trump was president, uh, a good uh, pound of prosciutto was Fifteen ninety nine. Now it's nineteen ninety nine. A good pound of super sada was fourteen ninety nine. It's twenty ninety nine. So these aren't three percent or five percent. The foods that I love, they're up almost double. I know. My mom told me she went to the deli recently. She got some pork chops, and she's like, and some other things. She's like, I spent a hundred dollars. She's like, I can't believe this. Hillary, what do you think? The, you, the White House, they're still in denial. They lie continuously to the American people. Are the American people, though, waking up and realizing that Biden's economic policies are a disaster for this country? Well, I think actually, and one of the things that John just mentioned, he actually was, again, totally right. He talked about core inflation. The other thing that core inflation doesn't include is petroleum prices, gas prices. Well, you know that petroleum is used in 117 products. So, of course, the price of gas affects far more than just what happens at the pump when you're filling up your car. 117 other products, including diapers and many other things. Now getting to the other part of your question, actually, with regard to how the American people are, are perceiving this, I always say that the economy is just like love and trust. You can't tell people to love you or trust you. They have to feel it themselves. The American people are simply not stupid. To John's point and your mother's point about going shopping, you feel it at the store. I think it's very interesting to hear, though, the former spokesperson 
for Jill Biden. Do you know what he said? He actually has said that he thinks it's actually, and this is obviously a Democrat, he thinks it's a big mistake to tie your name, brand your name to an economy that isn't in, he says, full recovery. Well, we know it's catastrophic. But also, I think it's very interesting to hear that the representative from Nevada, Horsfeld, he's uh, head of the Black Congressional Caucus, and he's even said that he right. thinks the White House needs to rethink how they're labeling this because the American public is struggling. So when you see the New York Times and an NBC poll saying only four out of 10 Americans think that the economy is in a good is in good shape, I'd like to meet those four. Yeah. Um, I, it, this is pervasive. It's across the economy. It's coming out from NBC, the New York Times, and the Democrats. People don't realize John Tobacco spent a couple of decades on Wall Street. So when it comes to finances, he knows what you he's know. talking about, as well as you do, do too, <laughs> Hillary. Thank you so much for being with us, both of you. Thank Pleasure. you, guys.